Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Daily Live Extras. We picked the bones out of Sean Dyche's press conference before Not Enough Forest. John, have you been to see any good films recently? I haven't got time to go yeah. to see films. Yeah, yeah. Fair play to you. Fair... Neither Watching Sean Dyche. Fallout, though. Yeah. You just said you've been going to see loads of films, or you can think about the other things, John. I like M&Ms. <laughs> Makes someone. you drink a lot of water, though. Mm. Shouldn't do that when you're in the pitches, because... Uh. Don't get that when you pitch people on the toilet. You miss important moments. Do you reckon he sits there while the film's on going? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, back are you? Back are you? <coughs> back. No, that sounds like you for the last two hours. Well, At least he's, he's got long his... trousers on. Yeah, he has got trousers on. Changing and, the story, and, and, and Chinese shoes. Chinese Those shoes. shoes could be spying on us, for all we new. know. Um, they are new, to yeah. my knowledge. A bit clean, aren't they? They've probably just been made. John, there's a story ago. about those shoes. Is there? Yeah. What, a guilty story? Embarrassing story. It's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. Unless you like laughing at the poor. <laughs> Do you know the way we buy those shirts from China? Yeah. And it may not be strictly real. Yeah, that's what they are. Ali. That's what Ned did with his shoes. He's got fake man skin. <laughs> Why are you. Hang on, no, sorry. I, sorry. I, I, I won't have this. I'm skinned. I'm not skinned. I've put all my money into an icer and then accidentally... Oh, my God. Accidentally oh, left myself oh, no oh, cash. Oh, oh, I've put all my money into an icer. Accidentally left myself, left myself with no cash. cash for, for Who's managing for the icer for you? Nat West. Oh, you, oh, you fool. Fixed. Job. It's fixed. I've got a fixed interest. It's That's not really bad. Not good. <laughs> it's bad, but it's so it doesn't go down. All right, let's leave ISIS. Um, John, Sean Dice, injury news. Nathan Patterson will miss the rest of the season and possibly will miss the Euro. We spoke, we spoke about this I think, yesterday. We did. Um, or oh, the day before. Yeah, the day before. That's horrendous, that, I think, for the lad. I really... And I know... He listen, gets ignored for most of the season and then... I know it's, an, it's more of a narrative than it is, like, a sort yeah. of real thing, but... <sighs> What? How badly have we mishandled Nathan Patterson as a sign? And literally from day one, Very not poor. just Sean Dyche, but literally from day one, yeah. this this young man has not had any kind of pathway. And to see the silver lining at the end of the season getting fainter and fainter and fainter is 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 just. I feel so sorry for him. I do. I do. Yeah, I mean, we've talked here, haven't we, about what's he going to do in the summer? Mm. Because if the manager's still the manager, he obviously doesn't rate him. He himself isn't doing whatever the manager wants mm. him to do to change that view. Therefore, minimally, you'd have been thinking, go out on loan. But then again, and what did I say? Was it yesterday or the day before? Mm. But he always performs well for Scotland. Well, not this summer, he won't, will he? So well, not really, at the moment. Really quite sad. Yeah. It is really... I, I do find... Because... because you know the, the 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 these are the moments, aren't they? We often talk about internationals, and I used to hate our players playing internationals. Um, but I think now I look at them and think, if that's something that they can have, the like Jordan Pickford, mm. whilst playing for a team like Everton, then it's great. And I just thought Nathan passing this was the thing that would be driving them on for the rest of the season, and now to lose that. Is is and I know I know that's not Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche's, you know, well, it was innocuous. It was but... innocuous when you looked at it. It, it was it wasn't it was nothing in it. But you just think this this whole thing could have been handled so mm. much better. Even on Monday night, the idea that he was actually brought on in the well, game. That's the chat we had. Yeah, yeah, you know, it just felt like I'll only bring you on when it doesn't matter. Yeah, and and to him. He Again, then tries too hard, perhaps, or whatever. Well, he did try too yeah. hard because he came on. The first thing he did was run round, time yeah. to, trying to boot people. Yeah, and I, I feel, I feel just so sad. Well, I feel sad for him, but I also feel like, hang on, she, you know, Seamus mightn't play on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Sorry, so it might be, it might Godfrey. be Godfrey. Or so young. actually, Pat Young, or Young. So he would have played, maybe. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? It's not a great loss in terms of he well, doesn't play. Well, that was, again, what we said the other day, wasn't it? Mm. We won't miss him because he hasn't been playing mm. anyway. But this comes back to something I've said a couple of times this week, and I've seen other people say it. The idea of Sean Dice staying after this season, to me, it can't happen because we will just get more and more players in him, in his image and players who maybe are good at the club, like Nathan Patterson, who I know some people don't think he's an amazing player, but he's obviously, if handled right, could have a good future. I remember when Liverpool bought Robinson 
And I I really wanted Robinson at the time, mm. and and it's on it's on film. It's not just something I've, I'm saying now. Um, I really wanted him, and there was that thing of uh, he's just gone down with relegated Hull. club. Yeah. And Liverpool got hold of him. The 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 looked after him in the right way, and he's turned out to have won absolutely ev- everything. Whether he's a player that we hate, but if we had him, we'd love him. Oh yeah, because he's got. And I I see a bit of Patterson. That's what I always saw in Patterson. A bit of that, and because we've used him in the worst possible way over the time he's been at the club. Fourth choice at a club like Everton, where we are, is horrendous. And now to see that one moment, one maybe career highlight because again you can never tell with a country like Scotland when they'll play in tournaments you just can't this could be the last time if he was English then you go well he'll have another opportunity and this is no disrespect to Scotland because let's be honest countries like Scotland and Wales and Ireland and look how long it's been since Ireland Mm. have been in the tournaments they go in waves they have a good team and then they might lose a couple players and then Mm. um and of course, things like how well he do in tournaments or how well he do in qualifying dictates who they're going to get in the next draw, mm, and that's where it and it's often the hard way they have to go. Yeah, and, it, yeah. and we've seen that with we've seen that with 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 Ireland mm. since they've stopped qualifying for tournaments, it's got harder and harder and harder. And I just, I honestly just feel re- I feel so sorry for the lad because I say I think his Everton career has been so badly managed. You see, the thing is, right, um, and you're right, all of the both, I think, yeah. But we go to independent commissions and the director of football rocks up as a witness and talks about the new Mm. strategic recruitment policy, which is fundamentally about getting young players or younger players, low-cost players, Mm. developing them, using them or selling them or a bit of both one followed by the other. But there's no pathway. Yeah. If you have a manager, and and it's difficult for Sean, isn't it, right? Because it's backs against the wall. Mm low risk type behaviors if you can do it uh, risk is reduced by having experience blah 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 so i get all that but you can't put on hold the development of players when they're on a three-year contract two of those years have gone mm. and because they've been two horrible years they've barely played yeah you know um and, and the, because it, it compromises anything everything you mm. know I know if you go overseas and find someone buried in the, you know, like a Leicesterwood or Brighton's mm-hmm. of this world, who find someone either in the lower reaches of the French League, but they see the attributes, they know what it is, and they bring it to the Premier League and they play them, and all of a sudden they've done it again. Where did they find this mm-hmm. one from? But you've also got to convince those players that there is a pathway, and, mm-hmm. and the evidence is look who's done it before, look yeah. where they are now. We would have, who would we have as an example? Well, Mikalenko is a good example I of somebody so. who has come through and because literally he had no competition. And that's the difference. Yeah, because he had no competition at left back. He's been left in but the team. Godfrey's been in there. So. No, but uh, yeah, but I mean, but as, when it, Mick, Mick's, yeah, but as, injured, a, yeah. as a solid left back, he's played all the way through. He's yeah. played through all the tough times. And he's an example like you can improve. Yeah, well, yeah, because because game time will improve. Because you, you improve by playing, even if you're not getting coached. Uh, yeah. James Garner to an extent is similar as well. Yeah, he looks yeah, so, looks yeah. like someone who's. He's not the greatest player in the world, but he looks quite comfortable playing oh, in the Premier that's League. That's the now. word I was about to say. Yeah. He's comfortable. Yeah. He knows he's good enough to be there, mm. right? And there's so-called bigger clubs with players who aren't any better than him who get a game every yeah, week, yeah. you know? And they will get lauded because of where they are, because they're playing with better players and or they get a bit more time on the ball, a bit more space and so on. And all of a sudden, someone's talking about them being worth tens of millions, of twenties of millions mm. of pounds more than a James Garner would be. Um, all them Luton players are proven they can play in the Premier League. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just, you've got to walk the talk. You can sit in front of people and say, and here's our strategy for mm-hmm. recruitment. But it's not just, we'll buy a young player like Chimiti and leave mm-hmm. him to rot on the bench for a year. Yeah. That's not going to work. That's not a strategy. Not no, a strategy it's, and it, and it, and it, sadly, it's coming home to roost a little bit right now because of those players, isn't it? You know, you've got to dip into your to what you've got and, and just bed them in over the course of a season so that hopefully at the end of the season you have you've you've you can give them more than a couple Oh you get to the point which we could have got to through injury, right? Where they're having to play. Mm. I mean Patterson might have been playing on Sunday. Yeah, he would be, wouldn't he, you to know, be honest. And and you'd say, well, he's had no engagement in the whole thing. Mm. I mean he sat on the bench and never been picked type of thing, mm. right? Ben Godfrey has come on before he's come on mm-hmm. when when the fullbacks needed, um, and then they're not quite ready. Mm. Yeah, 
I mean, he could have tried too yeah. hard in a on Sunday yeah. instead of you know you know Chelsea, but it might have been a sending off rather than a bucket, you know, yeah. rather than an injury. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and and that's what happens. People try too hard. They want to play. I'll show you good impression, all that sort of stuff. So. You've got to have a squad, and and they've all got to feel part of it. Yeah, and of course we need better play. We need better players. Of course we do. We need better. We need. A, I've said it all along. We need a better left back than Michalenko. But what? But from where he was, to every we, position needs a better oh, player than we've got in it at the moment. From where he was to where he is now is huge because he was. I know people see that. I thought he was terrible as a footballer. It was a bit, a bit, yeah. Off. He couldn't defend and he couldn't get forward. And what he's done is he's grown. He's physically grown. He's physically grown into a player. And he he's he's he does a very solid job for you every week. Is it the job that is required maybe at the Premier League now? No, but he's but the manager likes him because defensively he, he's the defen- he never gets done. Yeah, because he's a really good he's a really solid defender. And yeah. I think he he would be a really solid left sided centre back. Um, definitely in a three. But I I, I again you you na- you nailed it there, John, about saying about if this football club is going to have to redesign how it does things. And it's part of if Triple Seven get in, and it's part of the way they want to do things. It's bringing players in, it's giving them a chance, it's playing them, and then it's selling them on. And if they're not playing, then how is that ever going to? You know, if if, if Brighton had never brought players in, put them on loan, put them in the first team, let them develop, and, you know, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be where they were or selling the plays they are. No, you're right. And we 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 talk about some of the MBS that Sean comes out with, right? But you can't just call a document a strategy, you know? I keep going back to what the IC says, you know, about, or, or Kevin said it in his witness statements about the recruitment strategy. The recruitment strategy includes you're going to buy young, if you like, mm. or you're going to buy unknown players or those with certain attributes, whatever, whatever, whatever. But you have all the infrastructure around it as well. Yeah. And it can't be on the first team manager to coach in live games in the Premier mm. League, right? So you've got to have the coaching structure around it. You've got to have the, the support structure. Everything's got to be there. And there's no evidence it's there, is there? There's no evidence whatsoever no. that it's anything other than a few sides of A4, which someone's written and said, that's a strategy. And, th- and guess what? It's a strategy that, that everyone mm. who plays FIFA could have come up with. And don't get me wrong. It's you know? not It's not all... Being a bit harsh. But no, it's not, I mean? and it's not all Sean Dyche's fault. No, we, well, we, a we huge un- amount of it isn't. We understand that. I mean, we understand it's not all Sean Dyche's fault. You know, as I said, the, the Patterson thing started a long time ago. I just feel like... Him saying that and him saying he's out for the rest of the season and him saying that he, he, he might miss the Euros is almost just like it just it just encapsulates everything about this club about like it's it's a it just it, it just it just a player who a player that's just having his part this little part of his career ruined by a football club that just doesn't know where it's going and, and everything is he's not totally innocent himself, right? Part of his job is to convince the manager no, 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 I, that he I, can do a job. Mm. I've, we've no idea what he does or doesn't do in training, but but if ultimately the manager's concluded he quote just isn't good enough, right, mm. and can't be coached or developed in the time available, yeah, but he's clearly good enough to go on the bench. Mm. He's clearly good enough to come on when you lose him four nil, right? Um, and so whether that was just a free hit, we've lost this game anyway. Mm. But goal difference could become critical so it's not that much of a free hit yeah you know yeah I mean? we've dropped us that so the manager made a choice between bringing ben on at right back and bringing on nathan mm. so maybe he had been doing stuff in training that's made yeah, the manager yeah. think you know what you've just tipped the balance a little yeah, i'll yeah. give you a chance but um yeah it's really sad it is yeah, yeah. but you I, I, I must admit and i have to be very very honest Everything the manager says grates on me now. Honest, I'm at that point, and I'm and, and I know that's that's You're on, oversensitive. Are you? That's on me. You're I, oversensitive. Yeah, I get that. That's on me. I, I'm. I. He, everything he says just annoys me now. <laughs> Which is, and I. I. Yeah, that's what, people out there going. Funny you mention that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. You get that with some human beings. Yeah. Everything he says just annoys. The cinema thing just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. Oh, I go and relax in the cinema. You know, two hours, no phone. Then the fella says, what have you been to see lately? Do you think I've had time to go to the cinema? It's like, no, shut up. It's called stress, mate. It's just like... That's called stress. 
did he not think someone would ask him though like Pro- a follow up question but, but when you are you, sorry you've been there because you've played the, well we've been looking at the anniversary documentary Russians if you like where you know a much younger version of you is petrified just because someone stood in front of them with a camera right so when people are asking I don't know so so I believe it flows. Yeah. He may have thought there are even different questions. Yeah. Rather than the follow up, you know, you know, uh, it's just it, I've not seen it because, as you know, I got stuck getting in traffic. And well, stuff, you were doing real things. You were getting getting tickets. tickets for yeah. Um, that's, that's proper stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, it's it, maybe he is really focused because of the stresses, and maybe people are trying to trip him mm-hmm. up and all those sorts of things that it never occurred to him. This is actually a little bit of a segue. You can just chill and go. Yeah. Actually, you know, I went to see people. Some, do want to know? I that went stuff. to see Barbie. Yeah, you know, people do want to know that stuff. Whatever, though. So yeah. if he said like, make some human. If he yeah, if he said, I was like really, I was more interested to know what he what he'd been to see. I what if you know he said I've watched the gentleman on Netflix. Of course you have. Of course you have. Um, but if he'd gone, oh, I went to see June too. I'd be like, Sean, I have a new appreciation for you, my friend. Or he'd said, oh, I've just finished the uh, Fallout on. I don't like Sean. Actually, I don't mind you, mate. Yeah. You mightn't be a great manager, but I like the cut of what you're watching. Um, and who asked the question? It was the guy from the BBC. So poor guy is asking an easy question and still gets his head bitten off. He didn't have his head bitten <laughs> off as such. He didn't. Well, he I haven't just, seen it he just went, uh, oh, I haven't had time for him, you know, the sort of thing. Well, he so, should have time. Yeah, he should. Well, he has time to. If, you have to. if you've got, if you enjoy something, then go and do it. But you've got to have time yeah. because you cannot do the Martinez trick of still being at the ground at, you know, Finch Farm, I mean, at, yeah. you know, at 11 o'clock at night because you want to convince yourself or others that you're doing everything possible that can be done yeah. sometimes you need to get away from it yeah i mean you should go out to bloody nottingham sometimes for example you know um mm. because again someone could ask him a question what's it like being away from home monday to saturday i mean when does he go home for crying out loud oh, he doesn't you know that must cause stresses of its own of course it, it does and and, it, and i've been there it doesn't matter that your family know it that's part of the gig and so on you still miss them well i'm and you can t- the best way to turn off are when you got your family around. That's you. actually one of the major problems, and I don't, of football management now. And I'm, it's no, none of the pl- none of the people involved in terms of the managers are, um, is their fault as such. But we know, like Frank Lampard used to have Mondays off, yeah. so he could go home after the game and see his kids. Mm. And that, listen, I'm not having a go on him for that. But it is part of the problem now is that managers being sacked so often that they're not moving families mm. or they're. In this instance, got a trigger happy owner here. Yeah, you know, I'm not going exactly, to move, fa- move the kids out of school yeah. and all that, and then the bastard sacks me. And, Sorry. Yeah, and I get that. I understand. You'd yeah. never do that. Yeah. You'd never like. Obviously, Frank Lampard's wife works in London. He's got young children mm. in school. But then on the flip side, it's you're living in a flat, and maybe you are dedicating too much of your time to it. That's what I mean. You know, totally. well, you know, well, he, he, you know, he shacks up with his coach, yeah. So they never get away from it, yeah. And I think Frank Lampard was the same. And yeah, it was actually, we, we have to get away from that, Cole, don't we? Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, we have to get away from that. We have to get away from having a manager who feels like there's some stability and can live, can live nearby and mm. and can you know and 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 feels part of. I mean, maybe we just need to get managers who are from the northwest or something, or mm. or just from Liverpool. But I don't know, but. Um, so you're now going to do a list of all the people who live within striking. No, nah. okay. but Dom, Dom's, Dom's back. Good. Grantwaite's back. Good. So they should be fine uh, for the weekend. Um, obviously, Dan Juma, he's not not sure on a Disagana game, which is, I, I think that's a big blow for me. That I think yeah, he's, makes a big difference. I think he makes a big difference. Yeah. But Dom and Brantwaite being Shameless. back, no, I don't think he'll be available. What is old age? Old age? As a footballer, sorry. No, I think it is. I think it's a point of he's tired. He's got to that age where anything he picks up now, he's oh, okay. And that to me suggests is a worry because I think the only thing that will stop Seamus Coleman is something that persistent injuries. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's not the f- you know he's had quite a few injuries this season now, so I don't know whether that may, might make his mind up. Um, so I can see Ben Godfrey starting to right back on on um, on Sunday. And let's be honest, on Sunday we're going to be. It's going to be like the Burnley game, isn't it? Mm. It's so going Ben to... against Hudson Odoi then. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's and I don't, I don't mind that. I don't mind Ben Godfrey playing right back as such. But you know, you know what you're getting. He's solid. Terrible in the air. No, it was solid. Mm. But terrible in the air. Yeah, Tony Abbott wasn't great in the air, was he? he just Played centre half though. Yeah. <laughs> he was better than Ben Godfrey. <laughs> Simon's Simon's awful. Um, 
yeah, so on that point of view, it, it, it's better that we obviously ban tweeting Dom's having Dom back will be a huge boost for us. Um, but that'll be another decor of being behind him, even though he's uh, would you bring off. would you play would you play Andre Gomez? No, no, Andre for me is great talent on mm. the ball. Um, obviously, can see a pass and all that good mm. stuff, but he's just. He's just never been there for me, ever. Mm. Fair play. Um, he's one of those players who gets better when he's not playing. Is, is the... we, know the, we know the quality and the yeah. talent is there, but the lack of pace and he's always got a foul in him. Yeah, and yeah. All that. There's, there's no awareness. He doesn't sense danger. No. He's as likely to just pull someone down petulantly in the box as he is in their box. Yeah. I'd only have him in for the core, eh? I yeah. think I think I'd only I wouldn't want him in one of those two holding yeah. midfield. I don't positions. think he can do the job there. No, well, not like the core, eh? but it, no, no, at all. No, the no, the physical side of it. Yeah. You know, the chasing around a yeah. little bit, and he just doesn't do Depends it. Depends what you want, isn't it? Again, I thought against Burnley did all right getting on the ball and and keeping the ball. Um, if we can play to his strengths, which is create space for him, yeah. which is a fair amount of that would be on an honour. But again, mm. I'm not sure you you would need an honour and Gomez. Yeah. Uh, another, we're sticking on her in bloody Decorious position yeah. to see what happens another thing another thing um, Sean Dyche said was that before this run he was the Messiah oh apparently so yeah. yes I saw that View from the Bullens tweeted that I don't know whether they were being you know a yeah. bit critical of him or supporting what he said but I don't recall him being the Messiah and and just he's probably not yet a, a naughty naughty boy either no, yeah. no. no he, he, yeah I know, and listen, when we were on the good run... I actually think 15 games ago is more than not so long ago, by the way. Mm. Didn't he say not so long ago I was the Messiah? He said before the f this run of games, I think he said I was the but Messiah. This one's like so... 15 games, isn't it? Yeah. Half a yeah, season. Yeah, half a season. Yeah. Half a season, so... But that's the, the, the that's the thing with managers, isn't it? Mm. You know, you know, I was talking to some people on the way back from Chelsea and stuff on the Tube and the, the young Chelsea fans. said, well, all this crap we've just gone through earlier in the week... Would we'll be forgotten if we went on on Sunday. In the moment, it will. It, it's like everything; it, it doesn't change all the the undercurrent and all the challenges we have. But mm. everyone will be. Happy. Well, that, that's. I mean, that's. But but I think it's that's all about results, mate. But I think that's where we are, isn't it? It yeah, is totally. all. It is. It's it's results of results. It's not. If you're a Chelsea fan right now, going through their season, you can see them building something, mm. and. Because there is a shed load of talent, no pun intended, a shed load of talent and we that saw, will come through. And, and we saw this with, like, we saw this with, I think we talked about it last week, about Kale talking about Arteta early on, mm. about trying to develop something, knowing where the problems are, mm. and at least identifying it, when, where those problems are, and going, right, but that's what we need to change. We are literally just trying to survive. We are literally going from game to game. And if you win one game, you forget about the last game. Yeah, yeah. And you're not looking at the last game going, God, against Chelsea. But see, and we did that thing and we did that. I know we got beat, but that oh, it's all coming together. No one ever, no Evertonian has yes. any idea or any clue what we are trying no. to. We are just trying to win games of football. Mm. And that, yeah, and Chelsea will be forgetting. It'll be forgotten. It's forgotten now in terms of if you can't do anything about it. Yeah, it's gone. It's yeah. not, we're not, we didn't look at it going, oh, we stopped doing this and we stopped doing that. There's nothing to stop doing because we don't do anything. You know, we don't do anything that, that is, we, we are literally in wartime and it's this game. And then if we win and Luton haven't won, then we'll go, right. Dwight's running around, right? That he did, yeah. right? Was a massive indictment of the whole of the structure hmm? because A, was he running around on his own because no one else was bothering? Or was he out of position? And why mm. is he running around on his own? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yet do things in the moment. When he moved from player to player, no one else thought, well, he's doing it, we better support him. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So what we expect, don't we, surely, is consistency and that the players have had simple messages about what is expected, how we're going to play. And if Sean's lined us up to have another game like Burnley where we're just going to fundamentally go, we ain't going to concede a goal, mm. right? We come out the other end of this, nil-nil, then we'll be happier than if we're taking chances, right? Um, but we've got to do something to create chances that strikers like uh, DCL can mm. take. Absolutely, you know, his, yeah. his, his percentages of taking big chances mm. are really quite high, right? But he doesn't get them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get them, 
right? And and, and if, if the manager's concern, and it might very well be true, that as soon as we move away from that defensive rigidity, we lose both things. We don't complete. We don't score. Yeah. But we leave ourselves exposed. Mm. You know. But. That's not, not a world then to go on a high press on on Chelsea, yeah, but we did that, it anyway. That's, that's still, and, and so, you know, where's the challenge? We, we know in the non-sporting side, there's no challenger environment in our football no. club because we wouldn't be. Some of the things that happen wouldn't happen if there was. Mm. And if there's no challenger environment in the sporting side, are we really saying the sporting director that our football cannot challenge the manager about what the bleep bleeps going on? Mm. You know, how, how did that happen, right? Why, how did we conclude that the thing to do against that particular side was something that played to their strengths? Why mm. did we do that? Um, you know, it's not the time for experimenting, is it? No. We've made our bed. We have to lie in it. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the bed we've laid in is that we have a manager who can turn out, historically, through 500 games career, 1.2 points per game. Mm. And if he does that for the remainder of the season, we'll be all right. Yeah. No, that was... You know, Monday was crazy. Uh, uh, anomaly, mate. That's why we just mark it down as an anomaly. Yeah, it was crazy. It's the second anomaly in succession. It was you know, crazy. The, the, the crazy. And that's why, that's why, that's why on Sunday you expect us to go like Burnley because it, for him you go, well, I tried that and it didn't work. Back to what I, I know. I would fear us playing Nottingham Forest where we say, there you go, you can have the ball and do what you want with it. Mm. Because the fans at home will expect a little bit more. And even if we're not the boon them to death, they'll feel the tension. Yeah. And then they'll deviate from said plan. But it'll be in an unstructured it's character way. though, that though, isn't it? It's leadership it is, and yeah. character. Of course you it know, is. Management. And that's why Tark's behaviour the other night was a bit yeah. scary. You can't have that. Because when you, your most solid, reliable mm. person is doing it. Yeah. yeah, you can't have that. But it was well gone that game, so maybe it didn't matter. But hey ho. Well, I don't know what I don't I don't think any game it's losing your head. Is not helpful. It's not helpful, no. and it doesn't actually. It's just frustration. I get mm, that. It but is frustration. It's yeah. not. It's not really required. So, um, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Um, other than that, other than that, for the press conference, he didn't really have too much to say. So, still don't know what film he went to see. I don't know. Who he went to any. I wouldn't know. I don't think he's left a flat bar. Going to a couple of bars on Lark Lane, if I'm honest. But <laughs> and the uh, the Italian, he likes going to on Walton Road. He really likes it in there. Um. Let's have a look at some here. Uh, Michael Rafferty says, we all need to help out our manager, Blues. Please ask around. Spot on. If anyone has found any keys, if so, please ask them to drop them off at the ground. Thank you for your support. <laughs> um, Michael, uh, sorry, Ian Spencer. Just wants a bit of financial um, <laughs> help here. Regarding the 777 takeover, yeah. you should, you should, you said, sorry, the only hurdle left is MSP loan, but what about the... Uh, Who said? Me. You. I said on the news oh, that that's you? what had been reported. Oh, I see. You were reporting the news. Yeah, about the con about the condition have uh, to have a hundred million for the completion of the stadium. How is that covered if they're already struggling to pay off MSP? Who says they're struggling? I don't know. I'm just... Okay. I'm just I mean, all, I mean, all we know... And and this is all anyone can know, isn't it? You know, it's just let's just say it's you know unsubstantiated sources. But, mm. but generally speaking, they've known what the conditions are of the sale agreement with Fahad Mashiri since last mm. last year. Yeah, and clearly that includes because of the the charges and the way they're structured, you've got to pay off MSP. Mm. Yeah. Right. Then you can get into debate about how big is that number because no one actually knows yeah. absolutely, but you can whatever whatever. And so that's become the one that's become um, profiled simply because that's the one that had a date on it. Mm. Okay, but that's been extended now, but no one knows how long it's been extended till, mm. right? And then you've got the other things, which is complete the stadium. Yeah. It's less than 100 million anyway, because every day money is being spent yeah. on it, right? And it's seven months, isn't it, as well? So yeah. you've got seven months mm. to pay off whatever's left. Yeah. Rather than, and you're paying it to someone you've got a contract with, yeah. rather than saying, I need to pay this money to for you to you now to quit yeah. to get away. You know, and the chief exec told us as shareholders in the last meeting we had with them, it's he told us the number, but I can assure you the number he told us was less than hundred million. Okay. Right. And that was three weeks ago, right? So we've spent some more money since then, mm. haven't we? Then you're talking about the working capital and stuff that you need 
as far as the Premier League is concerned, to fulfil your fixtures this mm. this season, which will be uh, 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 that's probably just keep paying the money you've been paying. And if people think that's twenty mil a month, then it's three three times that, isn't it, or whatever. Mm. Um, but I don't think it's just the MSP things the only hurdle. It's probably the first hurdle to go over, right? But it's a substantial sum of money, mm. right? Um, and time will tell. It always tells, doesn't it? Mm. But as long as we're not getting any closer to the rumoured, not rumoured, rumours, wrong word, the scaremongering approach to, unless you do this immediately, administration's mm. going to land in our lap. There's no sign of that in objective terms. Doesn't mean it's not ha going to happen, but unless someone's got insider information which says it's going to happen tomorrow, there's nothing visible. And none of the warning signs of not paying players, not paying HMRC, not playing football in debts, all those sort of things, which might be, oops, we're in trouble here. None of them are happening. Mm. Yeah. So um, it, it's, it's frustrating for people because this is pr playing out in public. But I'm mm. the wrong guy, aren't I? You know this. I don't worry about what I can't affect, and I can't affect this, so well, I'm worried about it. There's other, there's other, well, there's some news today, isn't there? About them trying to di news. Di discharge some of their. Uh, other, maybe yeah. we're looking to sell standard Liege. Yeah. Uh, or structured debt of here to Berlin. Yeah. Um, also, possibly looking to sell Red Star to to so, Standard and Red Star were the two, weren't they? Yeah. Red Star's a teeny weeny little thing. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. In Paris, um, but but that's because there's buyers, isn't there? Mm. There's people who are interested in you know there's a, some rich guys and they're interested in buying a club in Belgium, isn't he? Well, we've got one. Would you like to buy it? Mm. Uh, but but again, that then it's interpreted by some as being they're scrambling around to find the money to buy Everton, right? They've, they've notified the Premier League weeks upon weeks ago that they can sa formally notify them, as in written to them, that they can satisfy those obligations. Well, that then means they perhaps move from minded to be approved to being approved subject to, yeah? Mm. And then you're into, can you structure the deal in, in exactly the way that you want it to be? Um, and we can all try and read whatever we like into it. You know, if it gets delayed another bit, few weeks after that, don't know what division we're in. But I think they've they've said publicly months ago that you know being in a different division wouldn't change their view about buying the football club, and they're getting it on for a song anyway, aren't they? So mm. um, you know you look at um, some of the things that are going to happen with debt write-offs and stuff by them and by Machiri and, and stuff like that. But just wait and see, guys. Mm. Just wait and see. But what about? Um, so obviously the other bit of just information that's come out in the last 20 uh, well the last hour or so oh, okay. it's something you know about uh Why? colin chong told the everton uh shareholders association that they plan to, on selling a stake in the new stadium at brandman moor the club isn't the club's intention is to keep a majority and a controlling stake in the stadium yeah absolutely so were you in the meeting when this yeah. when this was said yeah was it said just like that, or I'll read it out again? Exactly. Everton what, what's in the minutes is exactly what was said. Okay. Everton plan on selling a stake in no, the stadium. No, at Ever Bramley Moor. No, the club's intention no, is to he, keep a majority no, of the no, control of no, the stadium. No, no, okay. no, no. So no. what? What was said then? They did not. The football club did not say in the minutes and the sh they're on the shareholders' website, by the way, so yeah. anyone can read them themselves. It doesn't say the club intend to sell anything. Yeah. It says they intend to keep a controlling interest. Okay. Now you can deduce from that that be prepared to sell a minority interest. Okay. Right. And you know that I personally would advocate that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think you've moved towards that being okay now, haven't you? I've moved in any direction. That means I have a football club. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So, but you you used to be in the hundred percent. It has to all has to no, be. Ours. I don't know if I was in the hundred percent. I was just at Everton. I won Everton. Mate, to own. You were on that sofa. That's not it's, it's out there. No evidence. There is. I just want Everton. It's in our I want Everton to own a, 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 own a stadium. Yes. That's control. Control. Yeah. 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 That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. Own means it's all yours. Right. Well, control means. I don't own all my car, but it's my car. <laughs> I have to go and do the repairs on it, don't I? No. Control is the important word, yeah. right? When for, if you, German clubs, you know, if fans have 50% plus one share, they control. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. one share, that's the difference between them not controlling it, right? Yeah. Um, so as long as we have control of the stadium, and I think that's fundamental to whatever business plan 777 have got, um, and, you know, whatever people think, there's no great ability for someone to get the stadium without the football club allowing it mm. yeah other than the potential for msp to get control of the football club 
which is the charge that's against the 100 and odd million, right? Mm -hmm. Which in turn would give them, by definition, charge over something that's 100% subsidiary, right? I think the football club, club, as soon as Triple Seven or whoever it is walks through the door, should find a way to, to raise money by actually selling bits of the stadium off. But to people like us. To fans, yeah. Yeah, to fans and institutional investors and all those sorts of things. Only because yeah. I want my blog from eight years ago to be proven to be correct. No, it yeah. makes sense if they did. No, but it would make sense, wouldn't yeah. it? It makes sense if they sold a minority. A minority to to start certainly fans. Mm. And you could own a little bit of Everton's future. Mm. If people can't uh, own shares in the club, then the stadium's not a bad place to a, a secondary place. Because it's an interesting one because lots of the chatter is that MSP don't want to run a football club anyway. And maybe that's why they've granted the extension mm. because obviously they'd have to take on the obligations that previously Mashiri had and currently Triple mm. Seven have, which is working capital every month type of thing. And they wouldn't have to do, wouldn't want to do all those things. And that their real interest was in the stadium. So ch ch convert your bloody debt into mm. equity in the stadium development company then. You know, just just agree how much that, well, we know what it's on the books at, you know? Currently on the books at what, 400 million? Mm. Or oh, that was last July. So let's assume it's going to be on the books at, in theory, what we paid for it, right? But let's see what it, what the asset value is and then just divide the number by you know, whatever you're owed, the 168 million or is something, there a, and, and, and get some equity in the bit. In the, is uh, there a state. case of... Is there a case that I'm being real out there with this? Real out is, there? Is there a case that Mishiri sells the club, the club to 777? They own 51% of the stadium and Mashiri owns the other 49% of the, st of the stadium. The football club owns the stadium. No, I don't, but I'm saying, okay, the football club owns, sorry, 51% of the stadium and Farad Mashiri and whoever else own 49% of it. Well, they'd have to buy it off the football club. But if, could that be done as part of the deal because oh, of... Of course it could, yeah. yeah. It's only like Chelsea selling a hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just because of, obviously, Mashiri's put a hell of a lot of money into this club and... Mm. and and has put a lot of money into this stadium. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine if Fahad Mashiri is perceived, and everyone says it's the case that he's got maybe because he has to, but he's going to write off his debts as personal, call them personal debts, mm. right? Of whatever it is at the moment, three, four hundred million or something. And he said, you know what? I'll write that off, right? Um, as long as I get twenty-five percent of the stadium. Yeah, and someone might think that's a good deal. Mm -hmm. It seems like we're getting him to write it off without giving him any of the stadiums. So that's a even better deal, right? Mm -hmm. Same, and it's only what we just said about MSP. Don't get 168 million quid back if that's what it's supposed to be. Get 20% of a stadium, mm -hmm. you know, and then have the and then by definition, we could have an operating company that runs the stadium, which is not the football club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can still have so you can still have the majority shares, but mm -hmm. let someone else run it on your behalf. Yeah. You know, you go down into town at the huge Novotel Hotel, right? Um, down in um, Paddington's Village thing. No one from Novotel runs it. Yeah. <laughs> it's run by a management company who specialises in running hotels, yeah. right? But they own the building, Novotel, and it's got their badges on mm. it, and they set the policy about what standards look like and colours and da 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 da, -da. And, and the general manager who runs the place probably works for Novotel or whatever, mm. right? But that's all just making outsourcing and the like work mm. for you. Yeah. But yeah, all things are possible. Mm. Deal shaping is what wins deals. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you can shape the deal that keeps as many people interested <laughs> in, in, in what you're interested in going in that direction mm. in, in a football sense, um, and they're all, they're all going to get something out of it. Then game on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Jake says the manager is embarrassing. Read the room. One minute fifteen, he's cracking jokes and talking about drinking beers and watching box sets. The questions put to him are also an absolute joke. Uh, yeah, well, as said loads of times, good questions get good answers. Mm. Sometimes, what you... question was would this chap ask the manager, which he never got asked today and therefore never answered? I mean, I don't know. Okay, I have to ask because Jake. it's it's easy, isn't it, to say well rubbish questions, but. Anyway. There's loads of questions we'd like to ask, which we mm. know full well the manager would never answer because that's not... We lose sight of what these things are for. They're obliged to do them by, mm. the, by the Premier League broadcast stuff. It's part of the preview period. They do it because they have to, not because yeah, they yeah. want to. So...
No, some people do ask good questions. It's just yeah, there's some, a few in there yeah. who always ask good questions, yeah. and there's a few who always ask inane ones. So. Yeah. Um, James says if Daish is our Messiah, then we can skip the bit about Easter and and um, <laughs> and resurrect as David Moyes in the summer. Um, Dan says fifteen games ago I was the Messiah. Fifteen games later. He's like Andy the Frame climbing through the tunnel. Shame on you, Sean. You brought this on yourself. Well, Andy the Frame got away clean, though. That's the problem. Uh, Sean Dyche mightn't get away clean. Um, I found a quote the other day um, from the great Brian Clough, and he must have been asked a question, yeah? And it was about tactics and strategy, about football matches and stuff. And his answer, and I can't paraphrase it, I've got it written down somewhere, it was... Um, Tactics and strategies don't win your football matches. Players do. Mm. So even though the, the managers take all the stick, yeah. ultimately the only people who could have not, who could have done something differently, which would have stopped him getting the stick, are the eleven players who are mm. on the pitch at any given time. Different game, though, now, isn't it? No, Play, really. Players in the nineties and the eighties had a little bit of seventies, yeah, and seventies had a little bit of something about them where they. So it's not a different game; it's different people. Re, but they'd react on the pitch. I think now players don't react on the pitch. Players, players are like lemmings; they'll keep doing what they're told to do, that's even what if I mean. they, even if. And who's made them do that? Well, that's the manager. Isn't Managers, it? Yeah. right? So, so there you go. You go full circle. You know, when they cross the white line, mm. it's on the players, but actually, the players are on the manager. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. uh, Steve P says uh, Dice strains the absolute life out of me He could be here for the next five years And I still wouldn't see him as our manager He's It's like he's on a different planet Very odd man One thing I can say is His football definitely matches his personality <laughs> Steve Kelly says Alright let's hope you both Well the Patterson situation is Dice's fault in my opinion He's had chances over the last few months Due to injuries If I'm Nathan Patterson I asked to leave the football club in the summer The director of football Yeah that's the chat we had the other day yeah. Director of football and manager have lied to him he was told at the beginning of the season it was between him and Seamus for the right back, and now he's and then he's been told he's fourth choice. Unless the manager is gone, we'll carry on with players like McNeil, etc. To me, the manager, uh, we sums up the football, who the football club is. I I absolutely agree, Steve, and that's why I can't have this manager for another year because once the manager gets to a point where his imprint is on the football club, that's where I really worry. Really worry because the signings then become his signings and. How everything is done becomes the way he wants. It. And how do you get out of that? How do you ever not become what he has taken us to be, which is essentially Burnley? That that we that okay. We're in a horrible, horrible place at the moment, but we're not going to dig ourselves out of it by being Burnley. We're just going to continue fighting the fight at the bottom. It's called culture, mm? right? Absolutely. It, and and in our football club right now, the culprit culture that appears to be pervasive is both consistent in the playing side and the non-playing side you know we've got graphic examples so you can go find them yourself if you will where someone who was trying to aspire to the motto of this football club would say that guy doing that role hasn't done a good job mm. and then that guy gets a promotion yeah that tells everybody do as you're told don't do the best you can yeah do as you're told right and in some respects players for all their millions they want to play football don't they yeah and if the managers made it very very clear to all those players this is what i expect and maybe the first thing is call me gaffer and mm -hmm. the second thing is do as you're told yeah then those players who get picked are the ones who are doing as they're told yeah ashley young is the most experienced player in that squad probably maybe between mm -hmm. him and seamus and ashley's won more than seamus has and he's a bit older yeah. And he knows how to work the manager. Mm. Now, that's not negative to sh to Ashley. He wants no. to play, and he's doing exactly what the manager wants him to do, and therefore he gets picked. Yeah. So if that's true, then Nathan hasn't done exactly what the mm -hmm. manager wanted him to, and therefore he hasn't got picked. And don't get So don't just slag the manager off yeah. as it's all his fault. No, no. It might be 75% for his fault, even 90 or 99, but there's always... But Something it is that, that the person who's not getting what they want or the person who has to change. But it is that culture, isn't it? It is a culture of it's a culture of I know what needs to be done to be in this team rather than you know, you look at the top managers and the players the players idolise the manager. You can tell that. You can you can tell that 
They know well, it. If you're winning, well, of course, so but don't but, idolize them when you're losing. But they are. They look. Yeah, but look, even like you look at you look at like the Villa players at the moment. They absolutely idolize their manager because they know every decision he makes is. F- is making them better as players, is making the team better, is making the club better. It's taking everybody in the same direction. And you see that at every club that is going in the right direction. I know it's hard for us. But to... everything's fickle, right? Yeah. Absolutely everything in football is fickle. Yeah, of course. If you're is. winning football matches, you're a well run club. Your manager's doing a good job. Mm. If you're not winning football matches, you're not doing a well-run club because you're picking wasting mm. money on transfer all that sort of stuff and your manager's not very good we, we've we Emery's a really good manager mm. but you won't know how good he is until he loses six on the bounce and how he deals with it but then you could say maybe he's good enough mm. to avoid yeah, he having he six won't. games on the bounce but I bet you he rules that place with a rod of iron it's my way or the highway yeah yeah well, well, he rules it the biggest criticism maybe which you might project about Deitch is it's my way or the highway well Pep Guardiola my mm. way or the highway Jurgen Klopp, my way or the highway. When it's working, they idolise him. Mm. They're enjoying life because they're winning football matches. Now, under the current of that has to be, if the manager says to you, Pete McPartland, Mm. it's between you and Seamus, lad, to play Mm. right back. This is what I need you to do for it to be you. If you then do that, and he plays Ben Godfrey, Mm. (laughs) that's not fit. No. Right? And only these guys know that, right? Yeah. And in that moment, you decide he don't like me, yeah. right? And I'm off. Well, right. that's that's when you're absolutely right, and that's when players and that's the losing of the that's that's room when players story. yeah that's when players do throw their hand. Tell me one thing, and you, it, yeah, yeah. You told me something, and you know, you told me it's between me and him. Players have I'm listening to Nev. Nev always said, "Oh, I all I wanted was to be told one way or the other. Mm. Not oh, I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do that. No, tell me I'm not playing, and that's it. Tell me." I'm and not, why? Tell me why I'm not playing, and let's move on. And that's it. And if I'm not playing, because this fella, you've no no issue. That's a, and that always stuck with me. That line that is a the professionals, totally the, the professionals, the big big boys. You know, Just again, the truth. Go back to um, Moneyball when he <laughs> yeah. says when he goes, go up, tell them we've sold them, and that's the end of it. It's a business decision. Yeah. We've, that's the end of it. The professionals, they know what they're getting into. Mm. They know they, they know they're not they're gonna very play. Well paid for it. They're it? not gonna play all the time. They might have to move to a place they don't want to play. But they're a professional footballer. Mm. And I, part of me sort of buys into that when I'm thinking about managers in like, um, moving and all that kind of thing. They should buy into that as well. If you cut part, you know, I know it's not always appropriate, but it is that thing of like you're a professional. It's, if you're going to, you've got to be all in at times, and that means maybe uh, bringing everything with you. But I know that's not hey, always the back case. Back in the day when I were a lad, yeah, and I ended up working in lots of different places, I'd get asked con- constantly at interviews, hmm. and "Are you going to move?" Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. If I said no, they wouldn't get the job. You wouldn't get the job, yeah. But we bend and flex, and if you have weak structure and weak. Mm-hmm. Um, non-sporting people, whether it's your chair mm. or whoever it is, right? And you or your owner mm. who's decided, I want Frank Lampard as manager. Did he ever get asked? Are you going to move up here then, lad? Yeah, what? Yeah. what what's going to happen with your wife and kids? Mm. Well, wife works in London. Where are your kids at school? I were in Chelsea and Kensington yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So they're going to move. No. Mm. Well, how's that going to work then? Are you not in this for the long run? Yeah. Where's your commitment? Yeah. Right now, if he was winning week after week after week. It, it, it's your um, your Koeman or oh, Ferguson yeah. Yeah. if they're never on the training field but you're winning games so what yeah. but if they're not on the training field and you're not winning games it's because he's not on the training field yeah, yeah. right and all those um, behavioural things that anyone who manages mm. people innately become aware of mm. how to do things and what to do and how you can tell two people the same thing but they interpret it in a different way and you can tell them both you know I yeah, yeah, I used to say, I could say to you when when the, the annual um, appraisal thing come round, Ped, no one's getting a bigger pay rise than you. Mm. And then I can tell Ned, he got the biggest percentage pay rise. Yeah. And he's dead chuffed because he thinks he's got the most and you think you've got the most. I've told you both the truth, right? So sometimes the, the, the people side of stuff has to be so subtle. You do wonder whether two things. One is the average manager, can he do it? But the other one is, is can the average player understand what the hell the manager's doing? You know, you know, one player thinking it's between me and Seamus might not be what the manager said, right? Mm. You know, it might be Seamus has got this and it's up to you to take it off him. 
Yeah, people. I, I, it just yeah. needs to be honesty, doesn't it? That's all anyone ever asks. And for. if you can go to the manager with an honest question and get, but I, I can't imagine there's any Premier League manager who would say, "No, I don't want play, my players knocking on my door and bitching and whinging." Hmm. Boss, it's not working for me. What do I need to do? That's what you're there for. Tell them. Tell them. You need to work hard, lad. What does hard work look like? If you don't know what it is, have a word with, with Wony. He'll yeah. tell you what hard work looks like as far as I'm concerned. But yeah. right now, I just don't think you're doing enough, and this is why. Mm. But people out there who are watching this, they all work in, particularly if they work in offices and stuff like that, they all get appraisals and get told what they're good at and what yeah. they're not good at, and it's up to them to change. Mm. But they're all mollycoddled and earn lots of money and, you know... A bit delicate sometimes. Mm -hmm. Where Peter Reid would have sorted Nathan out ages ago. <laughs> or Nev would have done. Yeah, yeah. And he'd have been a better player for it. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Um, Stan Smith says, all right, lads. Great have, name. Have to be honest. I can't and won't listen. Watch or listen to anything um, with him on. He, doesn't, he says, with the manager. Uh, he's a disgrace. I was one of the ones who thought it was a good fit for when we uh, when we brought him in. I can continue to back him, but right now, slink your hook. I have to say, he's inept and clueless as Frank, and that's with the Premier League management experience. As it's been said many times, this type of play is only palatable when it's when we're winning. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, yeah. He should be. He should go immediately, and in the summer, get what we can for this shower. He calls a team. I don't think it's that easy, mate. If I'm honest. I don't think it's that easy. So go back to before when oh, it was me talking, I suppose, but talking about talking about um, like a recruitment strategy, yeah. And it says buy young. That's the what. Mm. The what's easy. Yeah. It's the how. Mm. So you sack the manager. What what, what happens what next? next? Yeah. Who, who who picks the team? Ah, Baines, he can do it. Mm. Does he want to? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you know, sort of thing. Um, so it's not. It, no, it's never that easy. Mm. Uh, but it, but it, but if the manager is is getting bad press and he must because the quote he said today, you know, the Messiah one, mm. the underwritten thing there is he knows that the fans think he's not doing a good enough job. Mm. Is that how he's found out? Yeah. Or did Kev tell him? Because Kev must know he's not doing a good job. Yeah. This isn't where we expect it to be, Sean. What's what's gone wrong? Mm. What can we do to help you? And and. You know, I'm going to go on that box now of the football club lets managers fail. Mm. We've watched a whole host of managers of different shapes and sizes, different personalities, yeah. different levels of competence, and every one of them in the latter days have been isolated, haven't they? Yeah. It's just can I, can I ask you another question of re referring back to the um, the meeting with the club? If you like, yeah. Because I think this one is a bit more damning, If and you can tell me whether it, it is exactly how okay. it is. The former directors determined their own payoffs when leaving the club. The former board made the decision, and it's in the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So they decided their own payoffs. No, I think Bill probably did it. Because the board at that time um, wouldn't have included those people. Yeah. In the sense of... but. Bill probably did it, and he probably didn't ask anyone's so, opinion. He just did it. According to the payoffs, Colin Chong said that the payments made to former directors for the loss of office were decided upon and approved by the former board of directors. He said that due to the matters of confidentiality. I know what it was. I was there. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I wrote those words. Sorry. The <laughs> so, audience, John, the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he couldn't say anything further. I mean, if that doesn't tell you everything about this football club, then I, I well, why? What do you want it to say? Well, I, who do you want to decide whether? They well, get paid I wanted off them not? sacked. Je I really did want them sacked. Wait, what justification? Justification that that they. I mean, I know it's not a real justification, well, but they pr matter, then, but they it? practically destroyed our football club, and 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 on one of the reasons they they pointed the finger solely at the football club. And I said it just before, and I've said it again. I will never ever forgive any one of those people for what happened on against uh, in Southampton. I ever. agree. I totally agree. With you. No, I know. And the ones I spoke to, I told them that. No, yeah. no. But is that general business practice? That's probably what I'm actually asking. No, no. You. Sorry, you're leading the witness and saying that. Denise Barrack Baxendale decided. No, what no, I'm asking was. you: is that the, is that general business practice that that the 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 chairman of the board who obviously no the board would make the decision? Well, you just said you just said Bill Kenwright made the decision, though. Yeah, because it, I can't. <laughs> no, no, I'm okay. Going to... <laughs> okay, let's unpick this. <laughs> All for right, you. let's unpick this for you. Right, the board at the time, yeah, will be the chair, yeah, the finance director, yeah, the chief exec, 
right? And the non-exec director. Mm. So that's Graham Sharp. There's no implication here by in, indication here, by the way, that um Graham's shared in any big payoff. Yeah. Right. So the big payoff share is clearly going to be Grant Ingalls and Denise Barrett Baxendale with presumably the mm. big chunk of that going to be Denise Barrett Baxendale. Right? Yeah. So you but the board make the decision. Mm. But some of those board have vested interest. Yeah. So Denise Barrett Baxendale won't have been deciding what her payoff is. Yeah. And this is where the fun starts, mate, right? But Bill Kenwright and Graham Sharp, although he wouldn't get involved, but he is a non exec, yeah. right? And Grant Ingalls would. Now, they're talking about their mate, right? Mm -hmm. And then when it's Grant Ingalls' payoff, he won't be involved in deciding what his payoff is. It will be Bill yeah. and Denise and Graham, yeah. right? And if you want to play the game, and when Graham's payoff's being discussed, it will be Bill, Denise, mm -hmm. and Grant, because they are, in quote, the board, mm -hmm. right? They also have contracts. Yeah. You know, the contract says, if you leave, this is what we pay you, Right? If it's our idea, i.e., we just don't want you no more, that's your classic, I'll have to pay off your contract, yeah. isn't it? Or, But the one that really irritates me about this and probably it's the sort of stuff that would stimulate a quite appropriate, we can't go into this, yeah. right? Is these people wanted to leave. Yeah. So why have we paid them to leave? Yeah. And it would not surprise me if people who are still at the football club would agree with us that we, they should have gone for nothing. Mm. But they, they can't say that, yeah, can course, they? Yeah. Right? Um, and therefore, they might be on the same page as us. Mm. And, you know, the guy who perhaps made an emotional decision of they've been wronged, yeah, <laughs> because he probably did think they'd been wronged. Yeah, probably because did, he probably, yeah. We talk, don't we, about if the manager engaged with the media and wasn't protected from fan media and all those sorts of things we'd all know him as sean the bloke not yeah. just sean the manager and he'd get a bit more leeway probably than he does now because all we see is him on the telly and that's it right the same applies with directors and board mm -hmm. members and all those sorts of things in the moment they think they're doing a good job but they become friends as well yeah you know denise didn't work for bill they were probably work colleagues we'll call mm -hmm. it and Therefore, they understand, right? So when Denise goes to Bill and says, someone's just had me around the neck and bloody, we now have to get security people in and we need to be advised not to come to the match no more. I know for a fact, because I spoke to him, he was destroyed by that because he wanted to go. And I asked him every time he mentioned it, why didn't you go anyway? And he didn't have an answer. Mm. He did not have an answer. He could not find himself in a spot where he could break ranks and be the one who did go. You know what I mean? And the one that really pissed me off hugely when all that was happening, that these guys and lady thought it was safe to go to Anfield, but not safe to go to Goodison. Mm. And that, in a the moment, they ended their period of tenure the of any chance of being in our football yeah. club ever again, right? Mm. And therefore, when they, as people, and I can say this, no, no, I'll get accused of you, didn't say this when he was alive. Bill would say to me, has said to me that those people wanted to leave mm. right if i'd known about the payoff while he was still here i'd have said why have we pay people to go we wanted to go yeah if they wanted to go let them go mm. now if they say i've got my contract here right and you've got to pay me up well no if you resign you don't get any of that yeah. so resign it's like saying to a player put a transfer request yeah, in yeah, yeah. right either do your job mm. And we, we may have to do some disciplinary here to yeah. find out how much of that which has caused us huge damage was true or not, right? But if you want to leave, fine. Just write out your resignation. Tell us when you want to leave and off you go. Yeah. And save us three million quid. Mm. I mean, there's subtleties around that. Mm. That money landed in the last financial year. Yeah. Why didn't it land in this financial year? Make them wait till July. Mm. Another three million off our PSR breach. Couldn't they put, put them on garden leave or something well you have to pay people garden leave just means you don't want them to yeah, do no. their job right but i'm talking about we could have said right you're gone yeah you're gone and we'll give you three million quid but we're not giving you until this, this year. financial year is finished yeah. payment terms and all that sort of stuff um anyway it is what it is but no they won't have made their own decision they won't have chosen the number but don't forget they would have particularly if you're talking about denise mm. she would have heavily influenced bill yeah, and yeah. probably and this is where the damage is done and, and I have no evidence for this at all, but if anyone out there wants to say to me emphatically, because they know mm. Denise did not write her own contract in the first place, yeah, I'd love to hear it. 
because I would find it incredulous. We know what we know and we see how people behaved and the sort of authorities that they had. I would imagine that the most, the greatest influence on what Denise Barrett Baxendale's salary was, mm. was Denise Barrett Baxendale because she yeah. was a cute lady, reasonably bright, and she yeah, would yeah. have just compared her income with all these other Premier League chief execs and that hers would look low. And and to be fair, also she's she got that's a, what agents do all the time with got, players. Isn't but it? also, John, she's got a right to because of course. because no one else was no one else looks at those other boards and thinks yeah. what would they do? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but no, and, and that's what you have to remember, right? Don't chastise people for looking after number one. Mm. No, no, I don't. I, right. I, I no, no, I don't mean you. Just no, no, no. General. I'm just saying. Yeah. I just, just, but I just think, I just think. That literally is just such an indictment of Everton Football Club in the last thirty years. Of that, of to us as fans, sorry, and to you it's different because you're you understand. I'm a the, fan. No, I'm just saying from the business. You're you're yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's such an indictment that people who have got no right to be at our football club, as far as working fans as as, as fans. Fans have tried to get them out. They've thrown fans under the bus. Write themselves their own, you know, it, by looking at that, mm. write themselves their own check to leave when really they should have just, they should have resigned. Mm. They should have left the club. They should have left the club. As soon, the end of that week, some of, you know, mm. certainly didn't spend a back and they should have left the club that week after, you know, if she wasn't, didn't feel she could be at the club because she was scared of the fan base, then she shouldn't have been at the football club. She should have resigned. Mm. But she didn't. She held on. She went to Anfield. I think Bill convinced us to stick around till the end of the season. Mm. And, and it's the, why the Bill, same with Grant. But it's why Bill Kenley shouldn't have been the chairman of the football club. He's too emotionally invested yeah, in it. Well, in the people as well. Yeah. But, you know, Grant Ingles is collateral damage. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time, wasn't yeah. he? I mean, he might have done all right of it. I haven't earned a few bob or whatever, yeah, but mm. he's still got a, a 20 year working career ahead of him, which yeah. is all going to be tainted by, by this. Yeah. And whenever these people go for jobs, they're going to get asked about it. I hope every time they go for a job, the person is an Evertonian sitting at the other side. <laughs> I really do. I really do. But the reality is the answer they give mm. will not be good for Everton. Mm. Yeah. And we, we know that. Brands does it. You know, Brands gets interviewed by Dutch media. And God, I'd love to. And he talks about what a bloody shit show our football club was, mm. or is, or both. Love to have a boss chat with Brands. It'd be fantastic. fantastic. It'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? They'd actually, see he watches, you know. Get sit so. down and get the actual nuts and bolts of it of mm. what of what went on, and who was doing what, and who was pulling what levers. You wouldn't get all those answers. Oh, you wouldn't, because of because of confi confidentiality clauses, and also he's got a reputation to. I think people get themselves into a spot with a huge amount of overstating of what NDAs can and cannot. No, I know. Achieve. But you wouldn't do it anyway because yeah. you wouldn't do it anyway because of course you've got you, you've you've got a job, you've got to be professional. You there isn't you know a lot lot we we learn a lot about football or footballers or what happened in their careers after their careers mm. finished. Footballers do. Um, what they call sin eaters. There's a lot of the, you know, there's a lot of that, isn't there? Where the pl player will take a lot of blame for. Oh, okay. we've, we've seen it at with Rooney, with Gary Speed, mm. with other. Kanchelskis told us that he didn't want to be sold. They will, they will swallow a lot of the crap when they leave football clubs. Um, but they all spin a yarn as well. Of course they will. Oh, that's a spun a yarn, you know. So, yeah. so. interesting, interesting. Um, Bainey says, really annoyed, really pissed off with football at the moment. If it wasn't for the relationship I have with Everton, I'd be done. Politics and football doesn't belong, and we've been um, at the cutting edge of it. Punished He's twice right. when their teams, uh, we've done worse, and that Shambhala yeah. heartless got performance on Monday. Anyway, uh, Rebel Moon Part 2 has landed. Well, I feel sorry for you, mate, because apparently it's crap, and Shogun <laughs> is superb. Finished Fallout, which was great. It was great. So glad there's some great TV at list. Um, just on the, 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 the politics side of it, I mean, we talked yesterday about the FA Cup stuff. I mean, the fallout from this is... is, yeah. is, is, is have I you mean, heard the latest? The AFL have just put a statement out, haven't they? But I haven't... Champions League really put one out this morning. Same what? Oh, the FA put one out this morning. So we did consult. Well, the EFL have just put a statement out. I'm not 100% what it, shows, what it says. But again, when we talked about it yesterday and it said the Premier League and the Football Association, it do, none of the football clubs were clearly consulted well, on this. different though, isn't it? No, no, I'm just saying none of the... And a lot of them are... Mm. And it'll be very interesting to see where all this ends up because I think David Moyes did a press conference either last night or this morning. He's basically said, well, football does need restructuring. The whole of it needs restructuring. So maybe that's what they need to look at. And we obviously, we were talking about the Carabao Cup yesterday as well. 
maybe in this country they just need to have a real, real good look at it. But one of the things I, I realised and we realised before was, you know, they've got rid of replays in the first and second round as well. They're not even in the competition then, the six. Exactly. Or, or, or the Premier League yeah. clubs. No, we don't get there till the third, do we, if you're in the top two divisions? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, listen, if, if you consult properly, mm. right, and you look racy up people if you're bored, yeah, on, on Tinternet, RACI, mm. right? But if you confuse consultation with inform informing, right, and the shit will hit the pan, mm. right? Now, if, and, and our football club do this, yeah. right? Because, oh, sorry, let's just say football clubs do it rather than yeah. ours in particular, but we know ours, right? Then our football club will talk to our fans forum. Yeah. And if our fans forum doesn't talk to our fans, yeah. because it doesn't have the mechanism or whatever, mm. then the club can say we consulted with the fans. Fans, yeah. And we know that with the 2013 shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the badge. The badge, Right. Yeah. So if the Football Association believes it consulted with the English Football League, yeah. but the English Football League, which is Parry, I suppose, he's a bit quiet on this at the moment, isn't he? Didn't consult with his members, mm. right? Then maybe that's where the comms has broken down. Yeah. You know, and the, the speed with with which clubs like Tramia reacted, it was almost like they found out about it when the press release... If It certainly seems like Yeah, way. which is wrong again, yeah, you know. It certainly seems that way. Um, and then you, last night, was it last night or this morning, you got Andy Burnham saying, let's change the football bill that's going through Parliament to fix these... That's politics messing about with sport. Don't go there. Just don't go there. You'll end up with a regulator with a book this big about what... Oh, should we do everything? Can, what can... Yeah, exactly. What can or cannot happen, right? You, you've got to set a framework, right? But no one's saying, what do the fans think? Mm. You know, I can throw a, one away now. Just fix it all, right? Mm. You do the draw, right? Yeah. You do the draw. And when the draw comes out, if the so-called, whatever small clubs means, maybe just say League One downwards, when they're drawn out the hat, they decide what, if they get a Premier League team or even a championship team, they decide whether they want to play home or away. Yeah. There you go. Job yeah. done. Yeah. They get the final say. Or even better, right? When they get to the point where it's the third round, you don't draw Premier League clubs against each other. Yeah. So the minnows, in quotes, get the... Always get the away... Or, so, yeah, get the opportunity. Yeah, so what you do is you you draw a name out the hat and it goes, I don't know, make, make it up, MK Dons, mm. right? Now we pick a Premier League club. Manchester United. But then people would say that was seeding. Well, it is. Seeding by another name, yeah. isn't it? And then people say, well, they're getting it. I think, you know what? I think the real sad... It's all about money, this. The EFL, forget. let me just say, the this EFL, is all about money. I was money. about to say that the EFL say, decision to scrap the FA Cup replay uh, for next season was agreed solely between the Premier League and the FA. That's what the EFL Well, saying. okay, well, I've not... I've only no, no, heard, I'm just... No, no, I, uh, but that's, yeah. that's good, because I only heard it on the radio. Mm. Uh, it was Adrian Child's show thing this yeah. morning, right? And he was saying that the Premier League had said um, that they... Clearly, did well, speak to the EFL. So now you've got the EFL reacting, mm -hmm. saying, No, you didn't. No, but you're, no, what though? You're absolutely right what you were saying so, there, John. So press pause, guys. We all know the Premier League makes it up as they go along. It, it is really sad. Really sad because Rick Parry. There is no argument. <laughs> by the way, right? There is literally no argument it, other than money. And that's it's what, only about money. That's what's sad, mm. right? So why don't the FA, FA in the Premier League do what's right? And just say, no, that 33 million we were going to give you, we'll times that by five. And we will. You just picked a number out of the sky. I'm just picking a number out of the sky. No, but yeah. we said yesterday, didn't we? Some smart person will go in and find out. Work it out. Yeah. In fact, someone said last night, I seen a tweet, and that was a really good one, saying Brentford ain't. Brentford, obviously, last season, Thomas Frank was complaining about mm. replays, and he said. There was a game, they played an FA Cup replay against Southampton a few years back and it earned them £500,000. Got a better one for you? Go on. Um, you know Henry Winter's got made redundant and yeah, stuff, yeah. so he's fired up his sub stack, yeah. right? And he does a sto he's, do he's done a story overnight about this on his sub stack. It's free people, just go and subscribe, right? And he talks about, because I, I immediately thought what you just yeah. did about our chat about 33 million, how far mm. would that go and yeah. those sorts of things. And he talked about Exeter. Yeah. And they were playing Man United, right? And from the one tie, Exeter made seven hundred thousand yeah. pounds, and that secured the football club for like two or three years yeah. or something. Marine when they played Spurs, well, that's one game. Yeah, so thirty-three million quid ain't going to go far if that's one yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Well, Marine when, play, Marine when they played Spurs, 
got a pitch out of it. Even and there was no one at that game because it was COVID. So they sold the tickets online. We we bought two. Yeah, Top TV yeah, bought yeah. two, and they got a plastic pitch out of it, which means that that pitch can be paid for all the time for people to play on well, it. Which pay, and there's all those things. And as you just said, thirty three million might sound like a big number, but it ain't. It ain't a big number at all. It's like I said, like when governments go. We're putting two hundred million into social care, and you go, yeah, but that works out at like nine point one percent or something. Or, uh, it's like make the number bigger, and if it's all about money, which of course it is, that's so what let's it's... not talk about sporting integrity, yeah. the romance of the no, it's money, money. it's money, it is. But if it's like if football clubs are saying we're going to lose loads of money, but then give them the money then, and everyone's happy then. Make sure everybody is compensated. Or, I don't know, have a system where if a game goes to extra time, if a game goes to extra time, uh, the, the lower league team gets a nice handout. Uh, sorry, or penalties, whatever it is. You've missed out on a replay. Here's your chunk of change. Well, right. I don't know, whatever. But if it is money... Then let's sat- let's satisfy those clubs. Then the Andy Burnham one it starts getting a bit silly because what? Sorry, Andy, I'm not criticising mm. you per se, but it seems silly to me because he's doing the very um, if you like inclusive approach, which is every club who's allowed to qualify for the FA Cup, so plays you know like the tenth yeah. prim- you know preliminary round should get a vote on this. Yeah. My first reaction, when I, I'm going to be horrible, I think. Yeah. You're saying that literally a Sunday league team mm. will get an equal vote with the champions of the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. Now, in, in a very inclusive and, you know, mm. let's have a vote on everything type basis. But then you'll have 600 <laughs> clubs yeah. voting one way and... It's a bit more structurally yeah. different. Let's just come up with the... Yeah. F- let's add- if it's just money, just say, how much is going to yeah. cost to buy How much off? is it going to cost to pay you off? Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day... I know, listen, we spoke about it yesterday again, and I understand why repl- There's, I know there's, there's been a lot of noise. I understand. You can't have replays because of the Champions League, and that ain't changing. That ain't changing. Those weekend, those weekdays are blocked off like that now in the calendar. There's nothing you can do. So they've got rid of Just them. Just don't play in Europe. They've got rid of them. Well, and I, un- and I, it's a disgrace because four clubs are dictating. Well, the clubs aren't, are they? Well, no, the four, the Premier League having four clubs or five clubs, not going to be five clubs next season, is dictating. It's the Football Association that's affiliated to UEFA, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, so. It's the FA who've agreed to those. Yeah, be, but it's the, it's the, it's the, it's so the, the tail wags the dogs. It's the at Premier the behest. The it's at the behest of the six. Let's oh, be honest. It's at the beh- ultimately, yeah, guess. it's at the behest of the six. Even though two of them won't be in it. So let's <laughs> let yeah, three of them might be in it. Certainly next year, Villa. If Villa get in, so let's get it right. We can't have replays. There's no reason why we can't have replays in the first and the second, but they've gone uniform. Yeah. Let's, have they gone uniform on VAR, by the way? Because you can make that up when you go along. So let's just pay these people what they deserve then. If they're missing out, let's but make Only it... the ones who get as far as the first round proper are missing out. Yeah, of course. But, but we have to have maybe something in place. Because you can't pay everybody. No, you can't. Maybe that's why you say, if you go into extra time, you and you've missed out on a replay. Here's a here's a is some extra money or something. You'd never know whether they would have no. missed out on extra time. No, but if you go into extra time, then you would have had a replay. So you you would say? I'm not saying a, I would say. I'm just saying. No, as an example. Yeah. You would say we've changed the rules, mm. right? Um, Exeter are playing at home to Manchester United. Say, yeah. Go back to the other example. Yeah, it goes to extra time. Yeah, and Exeter go well under the old rules. Mm. We'd have been playing at Old Trafford. Yeah, and we'd have got a quarter of a million. Yeah, so give us a quarter of a million. Yeah, right. We'll put it this way. Okay, put it this way. Right. Where's that thirty-three million going to go? Well, God knows. Because if it goes to it's all, not going to go very far, is it? Exactly. If it goes to all seven hundred teams, yeah, yeah, right. It ain't going to go very far. But are all seven hundred teams going into replays? Of course they're not. That's right. That doesn't make any sense. So put the money where it's supposed. Replays aren't that common, are they? Exactly. So put the money where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And if you do get into the third round, and you do force into extra time, then here's your bonus. That to me makes more sense because it is ultimately about money. They. Ain't change, they might give us the first first and second round replays back, but they ain't going to bring but, the replays But no, no football club budgets on an assumption they're going to get to round two of a cup. No. No, so, exactly. So no one's losing anyway. 
but it, but they are but there There's is a budgeting yeah. for getting knocked out in the first round of everything. There is that night, but of course, unless you're Everton, you're budgeting for winning it is, or something. It is a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is I know that, what it is mean. that bonus, but it's just money. It's not all the romance crap. It's all about money, no. right? Isn't it? it is, I've never seen the romance in a replay, but but it, I but I understand. No, it. the fact that the, no, of course, the the, the the so-called smaller team gets them at home and might win, yeah. and if they don't lose, yeah. they get to go to the Theatre of Dreams I, I, or or yeah. to the London Stadium or whatever, whatever, whatever. Right? I, th- I think I think the most important thing. And by the way, you know, people will go well, yeah, but if they win on penalty, it is it's about money. Look at like who was it this year? I think we've seen it loads of times where a club will get through to the third round and then they'll win by beating someone in the round them. And then you see the draw and all he wants is a Man United Liverpool. Big team. That's they don't away. care. And away. They want yeah. it away. And they get somebody who again is around them at home and they all go, oh, oh no. Because at the end of the day, there's as much chance... Of winning or of losing. winning or losing as the pop might have been other anyway. They want to have the day out. They want the, the day out. Games. They want the money, and that's all because that is their cup final. Going to Arsenal, is, yeah. going to Man United, going to Liverpool, going to Chelsea, whoever. That's their cup final. That's their one day that they might never get another opportunity, mm. and then they get knocked out by that team who maybe just one Slightly division better than one division there. higher. Yeah, and it falls flat, and they don't make. So we're fast forwarding to seedings, aren't we? Maybe, yeah, maybe. But I just think that it is about money, so let's be, let's give them money, and we have to find a way of doing that. And if it is, you get to extra time, you get half a million quid. But the reality is, setting that aside, or final word on this. Yeah, go on. Great timing by the Premier League and the Football Association, announcing something so divisive, mm. a matter of days before a bill goes through Parliament, <laughs> Yeah, right? That they don't actually want to go through mm. Parliament. And it looks like they they behave like, and this is where mm. quite a lot of mainstream journalists are going, is the Premier League think they can do what they want, yeah. and they have. Yeah. And this is on Richard Masters again then, isn't he? Mm. And they shouldn't be playing out in public. Premier League or Football Association, we did how? consult with the EFL. So the EFL say, uh, no, you didn't. How? Yes, we did. No, you didn't. How do companies that big with that much heat they're on them? They're not that big, though, are no, they? No, what, what I mean is, though... The say, numbers are big. They'll go round... This story goes round yeah. the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. How, how, do they, how do they make that mistake? Like, you know, normal... You know, if we made... If we were saying... If we put out a statement about something and we didn't check it with the other side and the other side come back to us and said... We, you didn't tell us. Consulting informally uh, takes nothing. Mm. It's, it's Are we a... saying nobody at the FA or the Premier League thought, what's Rick Parry think of this? Mm. Should we ask him? Yeah. Yeah, go and ask Rick. Oh. And Rick says, well, I'll take soundings from some of my members, if you like. I'll ask mm. a couple of championship clubs, a couple of League One clubs, a couple of League Two. I'll speak to my mate at the National Conference, mm. blah, 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 blah. And he comes back and says, oh, we don't like this. <laughs> We need to know more. I'm, you know, I'm not in, I'm not in, P, uh, you know, in, in, you know, in public relations. But I've been I've around. Noticed, I've yeah. been doing this for a long time. Yeah, yeah. To understand that, if I was putting that statement out yesterday, it would have been a joint statement from yes. the Premier League, the Football Association, the EFL, the National League, all the, and maybe I would have added a couple of more onto all it. All the regulators of football yeah. in this country, would, and I would uh, top of the tree is the football. And even if I'd said to them. You've got no, you've got no say in this, but I'm running this past you to tell you it's done, and I need you to sign off on it. I would have done that before it would have gone public because I don't understand what you see it from the government all the time, and I think when the government do, they do it on purpose, the old dead cat. But I think on this, the Premier League didn't need this. No, and that's it, what I mean. Yeah, they Crap didn't timing. They didn't need it. It's ahead of a, the semi-finals. It's got a club in... But it's a week or so after they had a board meeting. Yeah. So does this mean Everton have said, yeah, that's fine by us? Man United have said, yeah, that's fine by... Or weren't the Premier League mm. asked about it? We're getting yeah. told the EFL clubs haven't been asked about it, aren't we? Yeah. The Premier League clubs get asked. I don't know. I just think... And it's... this is the same chat we've had before, you know? As employees of the Premier League, are Richard Masters and his board members with Alison Britton, are they doing what they want? And then mm. telling the shareholders, this is what we're doing or this is what we've done. Because we do know that are some some things, and I don't know how they decide which ones they are, they have to have a, a meeting, don't they? And the members have to vote for it. Hence why we end up with a new PSR. Yeah. So how do they decide what he's, he's empowered to do as the chief exec or Alison Britton as the chair? 
and how much they have to consult with the 20 before they can do certain things. And you would have thought something as emotive as the FA Cup, the oldest competition on the planet sort of thing, they might have thought, let's just get all our ducks lined up on this mm. one. At least explain it about why it is. Because everyone knows it's to do with the extended Champions League. But yeah. That's not the reason they're giving, is it? <laughs> no, they want a new streamlined yeah. uh, thing, which benefits it benefits everybody. And all games will be at the weekend, yeah. like they always used to be. Mm. Well, they used to be there. They used to be anyway, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah. They used to be anyway. So. Um, and I was just looking at. I wanted to just see this for us. Go on, read it out for us. No, no. I just wanted to uh, clear this. So, so obviously, we've got an FA Cup, right? Semi-finals. This weekend. Three big teams. Again, poor timing for that, yeah. And one chasing the team. Yeah. Coventry. For Coventry. Both round. Drew 1-1 one -one with Sheffield Wednesday. Beat them 4-1 on a replay. There you go. So. That was away, was it? They drew. So they were away. They drew away. Drew Got away. Got them back to their own place. So that would have gone to Exeter. Now they're playing at Wembley. That would have gone, yeah. And now they're playing at Wembley. And they might have lost away. And they might have lost to Sheffield Wednesday and that would have been it. Or pens. It would have been all over. Yeah. But he didn't. They, 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 that was the last round they could have obviously got a replay in. But that just shows Bring you. Back to good old days. Third round, you. you know, fifth Five replay. Five replays. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that now. Imagine Bloody that. Bloody a Liverpool, they've drawn again. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, well right, done, Dave Watson. That's what I say. Let's just finish off. Bainey says, I think Dukes needs to offer no meaning, meaningful contribution. Chase your shadows with no intent. Very similar to a world we a couple of years ago. Pass completion is woeful. We'd rather play two up front or an extra in midfield. I do feel a little for Dice, as I don't think we've uh, we'd be as critical if we had those plus eight points except except for the one win in fifteen. Yeah. But we did have those points taken off us and this is the reality we live in. Yeah, yeah. That's a new reality, wasn't it? Sounds like a name for a film that yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right, there you go. We are going to do the match preview for that game on Sunday. So uh, oh, make sure to yeah. check that out when that's available. Do us a favour as well. Go and check out the 1878 FM podcast. Was it any good? It was honestly brilliant. We had a fantastic chat about Aldi versus Little. And that, <laughs> see, on the surface, that doesn't sound great. But trust me, it was it was really, really good. It sounds, was a really... And, you know, sounds like... Putting that on in the car. Yeah, it was. Sense. It was. It was. It, both gentlemen, Sam Avery and Dave Vitti, were in fantastic form. Um, so go and check that out, please, because it is really, really good, really good, and we want to keep that sponsor to help the channel grow even bigger. So you know, it does help. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.